Hello, hello, welcome everybody to Trotcast number, this is 58, number 58. Uh, hey, let's cut, the shit, let's cut the shit, fellas, let's just get right into it. Uh, there's actually been a lot of layoffs at Epic Games. This is the topic mm -hmm. at hand. We were going to do like a more uh, structured show with guests and stuff, but we felt like this is an appropriate topic, and if we had guests, this would be the focus of the conversation anyway. So we wanted to kind of talk about this um, a little bit more direct, or a little bit more directly. So uh, if you guys didn't see today, Epic Games did lay off 16% of their workforce, which was essentially 900 employees. Um, a lot, quite a bit, actually. Um, so within those layoffs, there were two people from RL Esports specifically who uh, got laid off uh, as well. There was uh, Clo who helped with the social media of CRL and RL Esports, marketing and talent management. And then there was Jake, who was the Esports product management, or he did the Esports product management. Um, and while that is a very vague way to say things, uh, Jake was essentially a jack of all trades for Psyonix. There's no real way to talk about like what Jake did because he did so much for RL Esports uh, as well. So yeah, he, he's like basically a jack of all trades for RL Esports. And the amount of work that he put in uh, into making the esport run the way that it did cannot go like untalked about, can't go overlooked, anything like that. And so obviously, like hearing about the layoffs really sucked. Um, and that's just a, it's like a very poor way of putting it, really. But hearing about the layoffs really sucked because it's not even that you know people just got laid off from their jobs. Like these are people that I would consider my friends, um, and it's just a very unfortunate situation as well because these people put their heart and soul into Rocket League Esports, and it puts Rocket League Esports specifically, I think, into a very tough spot um, for, like, the near... I guess the near future is the, the best way to say it. It's hard to predict um, the future, but the very near future, yeah. Before, I know Johnny's going to jump in. He's got sort of all the tweets and stuff. But, yeah, as we said, like, these roles, I know a lot of people are asking, and we'll dive in a little bit, um, we'll dive in a little bit deeper in terms of, like, what these guys actually did that we lost. But, like, essentially... Um, you know, putting the specific roles aside, um, and Johnny will talk about this, but, you know, it was basically, I'd say, like six at the start of the year, six actual R people that worked on the East, but like the RL Esports, sort of like the core six. Mm -hmm. um, and right now we're down to three. Um, obviously, we had two get laid off and uh, Murdy um, left as well, which we'll talk about, um, which is obviously not at the moment, but he moved to, to a different area. So um, that's kind of like what you need to think about is like, Pretty much half the team that that ran the entire esport is 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 gone um, or not there currently. Um, so we'll uh, we'll dive into it now, Johnny. Yeah, I mean that's a it's a crazy thing to think of because if any of you guys watching or any of you guys listening have got um, experience working in a team in a big company or in a team just you know in a in a small company, any team, you lose half half of the people in the team. That means the rest of the team have to do double the work unless, you know, someone else joins to do the work uh, that's now undone. So it, it's a lot. That's that's a ton. And like to make RLCS happen is it's a lot of work. I mean, that's why when Rizzo says Jake kind of did everything, it's because with a massive event like RLCS spanning, you know, multiple LAN events, um, almost 10 months of the calendar, two seasons, the last two seasons, three seasons at least. There is so much work that goes into this. And, uh, you know, as someone who's run tiny events by, in comparison, they, they, they're they pretty much like full-time when you do a small event. So it is so much work to do a massive event like RLCS. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I don't know how they're going to pull it off. Like it's, it's going to be, it's going to be insane if they can pull off. Um, I mean, even with a longer off season like this, uh, you know, double the work essentially so you gotta think that there's uh i mean i don't even i don't even think it's us speculating anymore because we don't we don't know actually what's going on the casters and the community uh the rock league like community we're just waiting to find out the news like you guys but yeah we'll get to this more in more detail later but yeah jj from psionix did tweet um trying to find out i've got a lot of tweets open to read out to you guys um they, she tweeted that they that rock league esports we're joining the overall competitive team and then in brackets emerge that was al was already actively being worked on so it sounds like there is some kind of solution for this uh you know double work situation but yeah we'll get into that a bit later first thing uh well first tweet just to go back in time a little bit is 
not related to the epic layoffs, but it is contextually important. And it's the Marty um, situation, Mar uh, Marty Shice, Psyonix Marty, who's been, I think, around since season three as an official RLCS um, employee. Well, Psyonix employee. I, th I believe is that right? Season he, yeah. four, I think. With he season four, tweeted. yeah, season four. Okay, yeah, he's he's been a you know rock so like community guy. Twenty seventeen, way before. Yeah, a long time. Uh, yeah, he he's tweeted. Uh, what what was it? Now it was like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, fifth of September, so a few weeks ago. Now he tweeted that he's got some big news starting today. This is his tweet. I'm stepping away from Rock League Esports team. Uh, the Rock League Esports team for an opportunity to work directly on the Rock League game itself and to contribute towards its future at Psyonix and Epic. So Marty leaving the esports team to work at uh, a different team for Rocket League uh, within the company. So yeah, he's got a long tweet about that explaining his full situation. Lots of love uh, for him in the replies. Absolute legend of uh, our esports Marty. Uh, but yeah, obviously we have to bring that up because with... Um, the two layoffs that did happen in RL Esports today, Marty leaving um, to join another team um, adds up, like like CJ said, to be half half of the team. Uh, but okay, let's go, let's go on to today's news. The uh, Epic Games news that came out, the first thing that we found out about was uh, that Epic Games, the maker of Fortnite and Unreal Engine, this is from at Jason Sh uh, Schreider. Is he a support? Uh, not support. Uh, he's a big uh, reporter for Bloomberg. It says in his bio. So yeah, lots of uh, tweets coming out about this from him today. He says, Rocket League, or not Rocket League, sorry, Epic Games, the maker of Fortnite and Unreal Engine is laying off a whopping 16% of employees. Sources tell uh, Bloomberg News more to come. Uh, it goes on to say, this morning, rumors were flying uh, as Epic disabled Slack for employees ahead of the news. Laid off employees will receive six months of severance pay and health benefits. Um, so that was what we found out about. That was the first thing we found out this morning. Um, and then more, the final tweet from him that I've got for you guys is, um, it says, we have more on the Epic situation. Epic boss Tim Sweeney says in email to staff, for a while now, we've been spending way more money than we earn. Fortnite creator profit margins, not as big as Fortnite was. 870 jobs eliminated, but Epic still hiring. No more layoffs planned. So that's all the news. You guys caught up to date. If you've missed any of that, um, the tweets are on at Jason uh, Schreier, S-C-H-R-E-I-E-R. -E -E um, and yeah, you can go, go and read through them yourself. Lots of uh, articles being listed there. I just want to say two things. I was sitting there smiling and giggling, but I realized it wasn't popping up on the thing in the top left. I was getting gifted subs from RG and Oski, so I just want to say, anybody watching on YouTube, I was not laughing at the situation. Second off, Bro, uh, I wanted to say... Well, inappropriate. Uh, yeah, no, my bad. But then also, I <laughs> wanted to say as well, the actual creator ecosystem that you were talking about, that is actually their most successful thing uh, from what I read from like the email. Uh, so they're like putting focus into that creator ecosystem of like, uh, basically, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. You basically, you make a map and then the creators ship out their map and then the UEFN, basically all the UEFN stuff is like their most uh, successful thing. So they are focusing on that, but everything else, uh, they are trying to get to a point where they're not losing as much money or any money uh, as they are currently. Maybe you make money. I, I Potentially, that, yeah. could be, that could be a goal. Uh, that's interesting. I don't know much about that, but yeah, Epic, obviously, massive company, makers of Unreal Engine. Um, yeah, big owners of Psyonix who made Rocket League, so pretty important in the Rocket League world. But yeah, yeah. To, to go into the details of why this is uh, relevant to Rocket League more specifically, it's like, yeah, like uh, Rizzo and CJ said, Klo, um was one of the, like Psyonix Esports, Klo was one of the people affected by the layoffs, and she tweeted, um, well, it was this afternoon for me. It would have been her morning. Uh, heartbroken to type this out, but I was affected by the Epic layoffs today. Uh, I'm so proud of the work I did at Psyonix and Epic. I had some of the most life-changing experiences. Um, and she is. She goes on to say she's looking for work effective immediately in social media marketing and talent management. So if that's something that you're currently job hunting or you're looking for an employee, and there you go, close. Got her. Uh, that's kind of like, a, I guess, the esports version of LinkedIn Twitter uh, resume yeah. out there. Um, my vouch definitely as somebody who's worked with her. She was a talent manager for um, CJ and I for the past year. And yeah, this this is completely surprising to read. Did not expect this. Did not expect any anything like this 
in the near future. So pretty shocking yeah. to read. I was like, I hit reply. Like when I saw this, I was like, well, that sucks. Hit reply. And then I'm like, I don't even know what to say. Like it feels like yeah. so empty. Yeah. So I'm like, what do I even say? Because I was like, uh, like obviously this is something I want to reply to, but this is it's such a shock. There's no preparation for this. I've never thought about it before. The crazy thing is we, um, I personally caught wind of like the Epic thing pretty early. Um, was kind of like going around our little talent um, Discord as well. The the first like original tweet, as you said, from Jason about, um, you know, 16% layoff, 900 people. And you're like, my first thought was like, wow, like that's not great. It's a lot of people. But you're also, the last thing you think about is that the Sonics team of now five people, that one of those guys would be affected. You're kind of like, well, that mm. that's fine because they're already... You know, there's already no one there. So why would you get, <laughs> you gotta, would you get rid you, of you an already play the, team? Play the odds there, you know. Yeah, there's already yeah, there's there's no one there. So why would you get rid of a team that already does everything and and you know work three different jobs at once? Um, like it was same with strangers or Jake. So, um, and then yeah, Claude tweets that, and then it was like that was I don't know that hit me like a ton of bricks. I was thinking, whoa, you know, this is particularly with how. I guess they didn't expect it at all either um, from the sentiment or the tone from Chloe as well. It's just like, wow, I basically woke up today, don't have a job. Um, and I guess, yeah, to, to, think, to think that this affects the RL Esports team of five people. Um, and then it got, but then it got worse, Johnny. Um, we, had, we had Strangest as well. Um, yes. Tweet afterwards. Yeah, so Strangest, um, that's at by Strangest Design, Jake, Psionics Jake. He tweeted as well to say he's proud to say uh, that he's had a hand in RL Esports spanning back to RLCS Season 4 as an open qualifier match admin uh, leading up to today as Esports product manager. But along with many other amazing folks at Epic Games, I was laid off today. Uh, he goes on to say, I'm immensely thankful to Shice, Ian, uh, Chloe, JJ, Uncle Cliffy, and at Corey, uh, formerly Psyonix, uh, Corey, and so many others working at Psyonix and making meaningful change to the game, eSport, and community that I've loved since 2015 has been a genuine blessing. Uh, so again, uh, another very unexpected and another very surprising tweet to read. I'm like sitting in my living room, looking at my, on, on my phone, thinking, how, how is this possible? Even though I think I heard about uh, uh, that one. This one came a lot later, and I'd heard about it already. Even reading it, I was like so shocked. It doesn't make sense. This, it does. It really just doesn't make sense. I'm like, how does? This, how is this possible? I don't know how. With some, you know, all the experience Jake's got, like, how is somebody going to come in and do his job? I have no idea. It's a, that's going to be a tough learning curve because he did a lot um, for a long time as well um, for for Rock League esports. So it's pretty. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, just for you guys, by the way, I don't know why my cam is lagging specifically to Rizzo. I think it's just to Rizzo. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's not lagging for me. It's not lagging for CJ. We got, we got some guy in the US, some guy in Europe, and some guy in the middle of nowhere. So, I mean, at that, at that point, you know, one of us is going to lag on any given day. Um, truly, truly unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, so apologies, yeah. apologies for that. I'll try not to move too, too rapidly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, these these tweets are definitely caught us off guard. There was also a Reddit thread made about the Chloe tweet since it happened earlier in the day. Uh, Chloe replied to explain in the comments. I I don't. It, it, she actually just commented. She didn't reply to a comment. She just commented in the Reddit thread. Um, and I want to read this one out for you guys as well because I think it does explain a little bit what Chloe did. I mean, they, these guys worked uh, tirelessly behind the scenes, didn't get the credit they deserved. Um, so let me read this one out to you from Chloe. Hi everyone, it's me, Chloe, the person in the tweets who got laid off. For those of you who don't know me, I've been in charge of the RLCS social pages for the last two years. I've managed the on-broadcast talent team for the last year. I've been a large part of the content and creative direction for the league overall. And then in brackets, yes, worked on all the funny skits. And I've uh, done everything related to CRL marketing and socials. To say I'm heartbroken and shocked is an understatement. Rock League Esports has been my home since college, where I worked uh, on as a student uh, leader in CRL. Although I don't know what's next for me, I do know that I love this esporting community behind it. I won't be a stranger to the RLCS no matter what. That last part is good to read, but yeah, hopefully that explains, I think, yeah, probably explains better than a lot better than we could what Clo has been up to for the past two years with RLCS. Uh, yeah, a, a very summarized version as well, because these guys, uh, they, they did not stop working um, in all that time that, uh, that I've worked with them and known them. I'm sure CJ could, uh, well, and Rizzo as well could yeah. confirm. Um, 
just not only like what they did, but uh, like the esports, like such good people as well on the esports team, which mm-hmm. was, I guess, it gave it gave us like working a little bit behind the scenes, like so much more confidence. Um, I guess in the esport, when you have such like the people that have passion for the game to grow, you know, it's, they're not just they're not just some of these, you know, washed up pro paycheck stealers. Um, in, in an esports <laughs> context, these guys are really pushing for their work. They trust me, they are outworking. Um. You know, even their job descriptions, uh, which which might have been like we don't really know how the layoffs work, but I mean, for, uh, I'm not, I don't want to call out Epic, but when you when you lay off 900 people, I don't know if you're like fully researching into each individual person, like what they actually did, or you kind of just look at the job titles and being like, let's untick that box, untick that box, don't need that. You know, like if you see. Say for Chloe, like a lot of people on Reddit, um, like Johnny sort of explained what she did, but a lot of people on Reddit being like, oh, that's really, that's a shame. But what did she actually do? It's a lot more than just, you know, you could read, oh, just socials and stuff. Like this team of six um, people for this season, at least, like they all share such a big load. And it's not just like, it's not just their specific role or their job title. They're kind of like all working on the product together. Mm. As Chloe said, she's doing content. She's also working with the talent. She's also doing socials. She's also doing CRL. So, and everyone's kind of doing that. That like, With Jake as well, is strange. Just is like the massive one because he was kind of like the secret, the mastermind behind it. He was kind of like the less, you know, Shice was kind of like the face, I feel like for at least the community to look at in terms of who ran I guess RLE Sports, were, and Jake was kind of like that guy, right beside him, um, doing everything else, uh, doing all the hard stuff as well, and really, really pushing this along. So, as you said, it's not just the job titles, but I, I, I'm not going to speak for Epic in terms of the layoff. But I, I feel like if they knew how you know how much work these guys did and how important they were to the ecosystem, maybe situations would have been different. But that's what you get when I guess you have a board coming in and being like, "Hey, you know, we're spending too much money." Let's uh, let's just you know you just kind of wipe a few, and you probably lose wrong the wrong people along the way. Um, again, I just think it's insane. What is it? Sixteen percent of Epic's gone, but like you know, fifty percent of the Rocket League esports team. Well, um, yeah, forty percent, like, I guess. Forty percent, forty percent with Murdy. So Moody, yeah, yeah. Marty left um, for another opportunity, but yeah, that's un- very unfortunate odds. If you were randomized it, which they I'm sure they didn't, that would be terrible. That would be very very bad result to lose anyone even never mind two people but yeah it i mean it does seem from our pov to be just a massive mistake because we know the work these guys do we're like how can anyone how, well can can three people do the work of uh, of six or th- the work of five now nah, well <laughs> we wouldn't have said that uh you know a year ago we we're saying oh psionics need more people they just need more people work we were always saying it like yeah they need more people they're overworked they're uh doing you know god's work but they need a. They need more hands to, you know, do uh, the grunt work so that all the the top guys in the team can apply themselves to the important uh, jobs. But yeah, now they've got less people, so I, I don't know how they're going to do it. It's, it's kind of crazy to think about. Um, um yeah, CJ, you're CEO talking standpoint. about you're talking about like the checking boxes for like uh, basically who gets laid off and stuff. And they actually mentioned mm-hmm. this a little bit in the official email okay. from Big Tim, Big Timmy, the CEO and founder of Epic. Uh, towards the bottom, it actually says, uh, we are cutting costs without breaking development of our core lines of businesses. And like I mentioned earlier, like their their core focus is essentially like UEFN and a lot of their creator focused stuff because that's what's driving them most of their revenue. So essentially, they're just like cutting off a lot of the stuff that basically doesn't make them money or doesn't make them as much money. And so they're trying to make uh, themselves profitable because apparently they've been losing money for a bit now um, because they, you know, they went too heavy into growing and now they need to do some cutbacks. But uh, yeah, they're uh, they're cutting costs without breaking development of or our core lines of businesses. So we continue to focus on our ambitious plans. About two thirds of the layoffs were in teams outside of core development. So they've kept most of their devs um like i guess the way to say that is of those 900 layoffs 600 of those people were not devs so people were asking like does this delay the development of unreal engine 5 and stuff like that probably mm. not it's probably still going to be in about 20 years uh give or take mm. yes, so, it's still right on track baby still it right, is right still, it is still right on track for that, that. 2043 <laughs> we'll be there we'll be there <laughs> exactly um, yeah, I, 
Matt just said as well uh, from Clover that they they cut off everyone involved with influence as well. So they really just cut off everyone that isn't actively, I guess, either working on the developer. games themselves, yeah. you know, developing the games or the yeah the Fortnite creative stuff, which I guess is just working on the games as well, which is insane. And you mentioned they they were spending they were maybe employed too many people were spending money, but you also have to remember that Epic just paid a quarter of a billion dollars in the in the whole Epic uh, the in game item stuff. And and then in an active lawsuit with Apple as well over the the whole App Store um, payment sort of thing. So I don't know how much is like they employ too many people, or how much is like they also have a lot of external things going on that makes their profit margins look terrible. Um, and they're kind of I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like Epic, you know, without you know looking at their bank account is kind of like i've seen it you know, from their owners is like there is there is, there's an infinite money glitch with epic but their books don't look good in terms of they're not a profitable company so it kind of seemed like from the email from tim and from what we saw from jason um from bloomberg that the, the, the sentiment was kind of like i'm just tired of like not making money so like let's just let's just you know get rid of a few people and Try and swing this around. I don't think it meant that like Epic was gonna go bust if they didn't do this. It just kind of seemed like we've been losing money for so long, or spending more money than we're earning for so long, and I've had enough. Let's get rid of everyone. Like let's trim the fat, pretty much. Like let's get rid of everyone that's not actively a developer or working on the games. And like Jack said, what was it last two what, two two chocks ago or last chalk? Like esports doesn't make money, so you know you gotta cut the esports. I guess is their POV, but the little more insight uh, jokes aside, a little more insight to the uh, esport and uh, I guess the the plans um, comes from JJ's Twitter, where she initially tweeted, uh, "This is you know pretty much as Klo is tweeting about her being laid off." JJ Sionix JJ tweeted that uh, this is brutal. I'm still here, but my team is gone. Uh, and then in brackets, let go or received emails saying they're moving teams. I feel physically sick to my stomach. I'm great at organizing chaos, but this is cruel. And then uh, six hours later, she replied to that initial tweet of her own saying, the three of us that are left from our esports are joining the overall competitive team, um, a merge that we were already actively working on. But uh, Jake and Klo were basically working three roles each unsure about how the overall direction will shift in the coming days slash weeks um and then yeah to, she continues on to s explain about the uh, i believe the epic um competitive team that she referred to as the overall competitive team saying they lost three and then in brackets question mark so i guess she doesn't know team members and they have their global championship in two weeks now i don't follow fortnite but i had a look at this and i think yeah i can confirm uh, looking at Wikipedia. Um, shout out Wikipedia, accurate as always. The Fortnite champion, champion, it's not championship, just champion. That caught me off guard. The Fortnite champion series, 2023. It is in two weeks. Yeah, two weeks today. Well, for me and uh, CJ, two weeks tomorrow. If you're in America, like Rizzo. Um, so that's that doesn't sound like a good time to lose three of your esports team. Just a, a Fortnite. Can I, can I say ironic, something? Ironically, a Fortnite before the Fortnite champion uh, series, global four million tournament. I don't know about that. May I speak? Can I say something? All right, I'm going to go you for can. it anyway. You can, on your own podcast. You can I'm going to go for it anyway. Our <laughs> podcast, by the way. This is our mm. podcast. Just want oh. to be, that to be known. Our names are in the LLC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> think, about, think about what you just said. There's three people left at RL Esports. Three are uh, yeah, Esports, the three, e yeah. esports yeah. division specifically. There are three people left. How many people are on this podcast? One, two, three. I count three. Imagine us trying oh, to run oh RL Esports at, with three people and just us. Think bro. about the impossible task that that is. Bro. Us trying to run a sm we small We can't even event. run a podcast. Three of us. <laughs> we can't even. We can't I mean, even. We need to go live on the hour. We are late every week. We don't have this every week. We, 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 every week. Every week. I we can't even get a tweet out most of the times. Week. Can I say something as well? We actually have a, a, a show planned for Monday, four days in advance. That is the yep. most ahead we have ever been is four days. New record. We're doing very well. Pretty good. Could you imagine us That's having a world insane. championship in four days and we haven't announced it yet? <laughs> <laughs>
Mike on the video. Bro, the, just the shut Chuck up. Championship Series. I hope we never have to see the Chuck Championship Series materialize because oh. then it will really be the dark days of esports if that's a, if that's a tournament with major signups. But we'll have to wait and see. We'll cross that bridge when it comes. That's that's insane though. <laughs> Three people. Nah, like I don't know if we could run RLCS with the three of us. Like it's a it's a hard job. A lot goes into that. Um, so yeah, I hope the merge is successful. I really do, and I hope that the uh, teams get along uh, well. And I mean, if 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 there's a you know a merge for it's not just like more people are going to come in and work on Rocket League. I assume that that means the Rocket League people oh, are going to work on other stuff as well. It'll be a little bit of both. So yeah, hopefully they. Uh, Hopefully they can hit the ground running, as they say, because that's going to be very, very difficult, um, especially with Fort Fortnite Champion Series. $4 million tournament coming up in two weeks. That's, that's actually insane. So I'm very, I'm very curious to see how that goes. Probably I've never, I've never really watched a Fortnite tournament. I'll probably have to tune into this one to see what's going on. No, that it's probably being somewhat run by the RLE Sports people. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be involved in that one or just things in the future. See... People are asking, you know, did, is RLCS losing that much money? So like, like, I don't really think it's... The, I honestly think with like with everything else going on, it's just their books. Like the fact that we have to mention as well, I think you did with the original Jason tweet, but they get... All these people getting laid off have six months severance pay on... Um, yeah. Which is very, I, I don't think I've UK. ever heard of six months severance, by the way. Which That's is very, insane. Very but Silver lining. It's, it's also, for me, another reason why this isn't like, hey, we need to do this or, or Epic's going under. This is like a... Hey, this is kind of like our, you know, our profit loss margins at the moment. Let's try and like make the books look a bit better. Like it's not the fact that they're still paying them out for six months means that like this isn't like a dire, you know, the Epi's going under. It's kind of like a, you know, <clears throat> things are things are kind of like in the negatives at the moment. Let's um, let's put them back. Let's swing the books before we get some more funding and and make it, you know, look a little bit better. Have have some less employees and try and streamline it a bit more. Um, I don't think that that is like a necessarily like oh rlcs is sh is shit <clears throat> for for epic games um i think it's just more yeah it's purely the, a board thing just making it making the company look a little bit tidier but it's obviously going to have a massive impact on on our esport and fortnite esports as well i mean fortnite e i feel like that's not really popping off i guess you could say as much as rocket league it's not on the same trajectory um as what we had the rlcs you know we broke viewership records had our biggest worlds yet we're on the up. Um, I don't know what's going on with Fortnite, but it's certainly... What, what is going on with Fortnite? I'm, he's I'm actually... Just... That is a great question. I, I don't even know, but it's certainly not... <laughs> yeah, it's something I to know. consider here is that we are talking specifically about Rocket League Esports because we know Rocket League Esports. We know the two yes. people that were affected specifically by this, Yeah. but there were 900, essentially, other people in all different divisions that did so many things throughout Epic Games that were also... Mm affected so it's like it's not yeah. just our Sports, sports that we are talking about this specifically about our Sports sports because that is what we know and that's what we see so it's like yeah there is so many other things that's like this this what this conversation that's happening right now is happening across you know so many other avenues i guess yeah and it has happened a few like the it's been popping up you know layoffs of various big tech companies especially in esports have been going on like uh for a few months so yeah i guess it's just our turn to have it in the limelight more specifically about us. I've had a quick look, by the way, at esports earnings. For NA's good at Fortnite, so that's cool. NA's like doing really well. NA on top. Loads of NA. NA's actually good. Might at this go game. to Fortnite, baby. That's sick. But I mean, yeah. getting back to like all, all, all from an, a very outside perspective on Fortnite. Obviously, you had the the original the the World Cup, the original World Champs, um, whatever <laughs> it's called Fortnite. But that was like, was that thirty mm. mil? Is that, is that that's was, kind of the number? Was, yes, that's some they went number. insane. Yeah, so they kind of went like, Ooh, yeah. and then they're kind of just like down it. Whereas we've kind of always 30, yeah. been on like the steady, the steady. I feel like we're more more stable esport, um, but we don't. Obviously, that's nothing against anyone that runs that on that team. But we, yeah, we just are, are less. I've just got less, a lot less of an idea of what's actually going on with the Fortnite esports team, which is also. A little bit scary from our perspective with the whole merge and stuff. We don't really know how that's going to affect the RLCS because, as we said, now a team of three. Though there's three people for next season that have previously worked on on the product on 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 Rocket League on the RLCS. Well, so, see, the, th the thing is, scary. right? So the merge obviously means that more people are going to come in to work on RLCS. More more people are going to come in and work for with the RL RL Esports guys on uh, uh well from Psionics. Um, 
but yeah, it, it, it'll be both ways, like we keep saying. If the, uh, if the, uh, what are, I can't remember the name of the team that JJ tweeted. The overall competitive team, I, I suppose that's the name of the, like, the other competitive team that they're joining because there's more. Is, is Fortnite the only game outside of Rocket League that has a competitive scene under the Epic banner? I should probably know this, but I don't. Yeah, they got rid of that other, um, well, it wasn't, it wasn't Heroes of the Storm, was it? It was something like that. No, was Heroes the other... of the Storm was Blizzard. I can't remember what other one. It was Ep- some other Epic, epic game that they, they just binned. Just Rainbow to... Six? No, that was Ubisoft, wasn't it? I don't, either way, it's called the overall, guys, but... <laughs> overall competitive uh, team. And the Psionics competitive team. They, they're all going to be working together, but that means you know if yes. they've had layoffs and our esports competitive team, the uh, Psionix uh, esports team have had layoffs. Then overall, they're both going to be struggling to you know do the work that they had to do. Um, so how are they going to be picking up the pieces? It's not like you know you're getting a merge where people are like, right, I've got nothing on my plate. Let me take some of your work. Let me help out there, here and there. They're probably all going to be like uh, pretty busy, if I had to guess. So yeah, Mission Impossible. Uh, I don't know what goes on behind the scenes. I'm not a uh, part of those conversations, but. I can only imagine that's extremely difficult and I would, if you want a good example, I'd refer you to Rizzle's previous analogy about Chalkcast running RLCS and would we be capable of doing it? No, don't think so either. No. Well, we're also three people, so I'd say it's tough I hear. It's uh, tough I hear for three, three people esports teams, man. That's, that's insane. I feel like oh. <sighs> uh, we should probably go on as well before I forget. Um, I've put these tweets in the wrong order i don't know why i did this let me find the one i was looking for here it is yeah marty did tweet about uh, well he retweeted strangest uh tweet to say uh jake and i started in esports together and he has been along with me on the ride almost eight years now and i owe so much to him jake is rocket league esports this is marty's marty's own words he says jake is rocket league esports he is the blood that keeps the heart of our esports community beating he is truly the unsung hero of the RLCS and has done so much to bring uh, bring it to what it is today. He is easily the best, most hardworking, and genuinely kind person I know. This one hurt the most. Um, and also, Ian uh, tweeted, uh, retweeted Chloe's tweet to say Chloe was a great hard uh, co-worker, and more importantly, an awesome person. She's a rock star with an incredible work ethic and I can't speak highly enough of her. So, I mean, expected praise from the, well, former Sonic Seasports Marty and current Sonic Seasports Ian. But I think it like highlights just how big of an impact they, they had. And I guess it like, explains better than we can. How, how on earth are you going to replace these people? <laughs> like, surely they're, they're hiring more esports people. You've got to think because a, mar- a merge is just going to be well, That's going to be so hard. No. I don't see. Well, actually, no. I mean, what uh, if I can find it again, but the the Tim Sweeney email, uh, again, the Epic yeah, Games They said CEO. they're hiring, but who are, who are they hiring? No, they're, no, no. Like, they said uh, they went to, uh, I can't find it exactly, but something along the lines of net zero hiring, which I would assume means don't hire zero past hiring. losing money. <laughs> uh, uh, wait right? a minute, wait a minute. Is that I a swear... zero hiring or don't hire past losing money? One of what those. is net zero? That seems like the yeah, most here, here corporate is, is. term I have. Epic folks around the world have been making ongoing efforts to reduce costs, including moving to net zero hiring and cutting operate, operating uh, spend mm. on things like marketing and events. Interesting. Which marketing I mean, and events is... would include RLCS, by the way. Yes. Yeah, it would. Yeah, the, the initial uh, Jason Schreier tweet uh said 870 jobs eliminated but epic is still hiring is that like corrected or amended later on or um doesn't doesn't net zero mean if they've got rid of 900 people they're gonna (laughs) fill those 900 people's no there's no way that means that Uh, net zero lost gain net zero zero net net. zero net net zero would either mean no no hiring no new roles exactly no new hirings or it would mean no hiring people um, to the point oh, where from you, you don't lose money. Yeah. No, so they're, they're still they're hiring, sense. but that would be to replace more layoffs. No, no, probably... I don't think they're hiring. <laughs> it's, but it's like, why? Why again. did the why did the tweet uh, initially say? But Epic is still hiring. Then is that just wrong? 
It's the, the one, did it. The one I linked earlier. It did. Yeah, yeah. The second uh, Jason Schreier tweet. Uh, oh, well, maybe maybe I devs. Did it. I did it. So if if anyone leaves, they'll 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 fill they'll fill any holes from now on. That they're not actually actively hiring any new people. Does that make sense? No, because yeah. that would mean hiring. No. Well, no. It just means if someone like if from now on the current say. Um, JJ leaves, they're going to hire someone for JJ's role. It's net zero. Like, they're going to keep the same roles and jobs. It's just if anyone leaves, they're going to feel those. They're not just going to like, oh, okay. okay, well, that's enough. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So, if, now so, on, if so, a job already exists, so what, is, what is yeah. the reason? This is so funny. This is like three idiots arguing finance, but like, what, what is the reason for that? Is it because like they pay that person too much? Then they're like, let's hire somebody for cheaper. Is that the reason? Well, no, they're uh, not like get ri- getting rid of anyone from now. I think they're happy with what they've just done. Sixteen percent gone. They're happy with the books. So net zero means from now on, if anyone leaves, if anyone dies, we're we're happy to still fill that hole, that or that I job. I don't think uh, Epic Games wants to be associated with filling holes, CJ. Um, but that's uh, but that's net zero. That's what I'm saying. Correct? Can I get a one in chat if that's correct? <laughs> like they're not they're not active. They're not they're not expanding. Just they're just replacing if they need to okay. replace. If anyone leaves or if anyone you get run, you guys get it, don't you? Yeah. Like I, I get what you're they're saying, happy yeah. with where they're at. I get it, yeah. Well, no, they're not happy. That's why they just laid off nine hundred people. Well now they're happy. No, no, they're happy. Yes. They okay, weren't happy. But no, they are. Okay. Um I I, I apparently, yeah. I guess I guess now they're happy, but yeah, we don't really know. Uh, I mean, this really did come out of nowhere for uh, us casters, you know, community people. I had no idea this was gonna happen. It didn't seem like, based on what we're reading, that the uh, the, the the people like Go saw it coming either. So yeah, very very surprising. Not really sure what the immediate future will uh, hold, but we'll have to wait and see. And uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it all works out. Can I just say as well, I've been getting, we've been getting hounded. I've also been getting hounded on my own streams about, you know, when does the next season start? Surely, you know, obviously the announcement about 2024. Now, does everyone realize that we do not know? Yeah, <laughs> we do, we do so. not know. If, if this wasn't the biggest in case right now that we, who everyone <laughs> thinks that we're somehow on the inside and we have exact dates, we know what's happening, we know locations, we know, like if this isn't the best indication right now that, we have zero. You know, you know, CJ. Can I say something? <laughs> Audio's gone. Yeah, yeah, you got it, bro. This this sounds like something that somebody would say if they knew. Oh, uh, he's got you there. He does have you there. To be fair, he's got you on mm. that one. It's it's actually the yeah. perfect like cover up, isn't it? You know, like, you know what a, you could do. It's a perfect because, crime. Because I know you mm. know. You know what you could do is you could tweet saying something along the lines of like, "Hmm, I think the RLCS season will start around this week to this week. Give like a gap." <laughs> Give like an estimate yeah. just to keep people guessing, you know, but be, be correct so you can retweet it later. So like between January and April, you know, That's is that, a, is yeah, that good tight, enough? Tighter gap, okay. but like, you know, tighten it up a little okay. bit. Two week period, but it's all good. Yeah. That'd be pretty good. January, April. Mm-hmm. Not bad. Mm-hmm. Don't we'll mind that. We'll work I don't mind that at all. Anyway, that's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly a, uh, a, a, uh, all right, a dark day, I guess you could say. It for, is. Yeah, for it's just, a dark day. You know, we don't want to fully doomsday. We're trying to still put a positive. Oh, well, not a positive spin. You guys know what I mean. We don't want to um, just. Be well, like, we don't oh have. We don't have value talking about it. We don't want to pretend it didn't happen because it's yeah. a, it's a sad yeah. it's sad news, but it's also true. So, and it's very very relevant to uh, you know this podcast this the scene we all operate in. So yeah, we when we were gonna we we're actually planning a different just a regular shotcast today because this hadn't happened obviously but then we thought like it doesn't really make sense to talk about anything else today uh because i'm sure you guys all have questions about it and some people will need updated about it but yeah we want to do another episode on monday there'll be a more standard shotcast episode because we yeah we're not going to just you know, turn that we like cj said it's not all doom and gloom we don't, don't want to just like be turn turn all of you guys uh listening into us just worrying about everything because yeah we don't really know what's happening next but we're gonna take it step by step see what see what happens i guess and uh but without knowing best of like <laughs> obviously as i said we don't know but i'm mm-hmm. sure mm-hmm. i'm sure the esport will be fine um so let's Likewise. not say all oh, like let's not you know we were trying to we were trying to say the chalk gonna have to run the chalk championship series all right i'm sure the rlcs will will still be fine um it's just that we've really 
Uh, as I said, like we, I feel like a team of six on the esports team Rizzo was probably should have been a team of fifteen. Um, yeah, already actually, maybe 10, 10, 15, wouldn't mind 10, that. 10, 15, maybe yeah, twelve, yeah. like minimum. Yeah. Um, and and as and now there's three, obviously with the merge um coming across as well, but we don't know. It, it doesn't seem like that's a very big team either, and they've lost three people as well. So right. it doesn't seem like it's getting bigger. Um, next time, I, I think it was still. In my mind, there's you know these guys are going to be really working their asses can I, off. Can I say something? <laughs> <laughs> you can you stop you, asking you for permission? <laughs> I don't mind when uh, you say something. <laughs> okay, say good, something. good, good. Actually, I'm thinking. Okay, I'm thinking about this. I'm in. I'm in Epic Games shoes right now. I'm. I'm actually Tim. I'm Tim right now. I'm thinking about this. Right. They're trying to lose less money, and they also said in their tweet, mm. "Uh, where is it?" Ongoing efforts to reduce costs. Or this is an email, not a tweet, by the way. Uh, ongoing efforts to reduce costs, including moving to net zero hiring, which we talked about, and cutting operate, uh, operating spend on things like marketing and events, which we said includes like RL esports, esports in general, marketing in general, a bunch of stuff. But uh, RL esports and uh, es yeah, esports would be included in marketing and all that stuff. Realistically, there's no way RLCS and RL esports makes zero dollars it makes some amount of dollars so you just have to get to the point of how many dollars does it make and maybe that's where we'll be at does that make any sense to anybody <laughs> <laughs> because now that i said what? that <laughs> what are you saying <laughs> what what <laughs> Yeah, so uh, yeah, let me let me there, say to you what. So there, RLCS, right, what, what, what I'm getting at, what I'm getting okay. at, if there was a, th there's no way RLCS makes zero dollars. So there would okay. be yeah. a, in this situation, true, there would be a cut to spending to the point where it, they got to break even. That's what I'm getting mm. at. If the eSport made, I don't know, $20 million, they would get to the point where they would be spending $20 million because they, $20 are million. they are trying, yeah, exactly, or maybe 19. Try and keep making $20 million. Yes, yep. exactly. So that's what they would be willing to spend on something like that or maybe a little bit above or a little bit below, but like not In much. fact, they, they may even be willing to have, make losses in esports because it is essentially an advertisement. Right, to, but they're trying to cut and marketing. Like, not all yeah. marketing, but their costs on marketing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of with Johnny. If I'm epic, I'm, I'm not, I feel like I'm not like... We cannot lose a cent on the esport because, you know, it's it's well, obviously esports in general. I feel like just loses money. But as you said, it <laughs> That's is not more... a good argument for it though. <laughs> esports so lose money. Just Don't worry about it. You're gonna lose money. No, as you said, it's more of an advertisement. It, it has it's always been true. Like you go to um, a land, you go to a land. For the, for the most part, you can buy not just RLCS merch. They got Rocket League. You know, general Rocket League merch. It's sort of like this is Rocket League. You know, mm -hmm. check out. Our battle, guys. If you want check out our rocket to survive, pass. please buy a T-shirt. Um, please buy a T-shirt. Check out what the rocket. Check out the new car. Oh, check out. No. You know, we're we're also advertising. Obviously, we're getting a lot of eyes. When we're getting half a million, almost half a million, watching uh, live concurrent at at Worlds. You, you know, that's a lot of eyes. That's a lot of money coming through. And I feel like as well that the the, the trajectory. I feel like they have to realize that. You know, I don't want to say I don't want to compare ourselves to Fortnite because we don't want to like kick each other. We're kind of we're a team now. Yeah, we're a team. But the, we're the the upward trajectory that Rocket League is on, like we are, we're pushing up. You know what I'm saying? Where we Unreal Engine Five might be 800 years away, but we're still somehow going up. So hopefully they can realize um, where this where this is going and put more money into the esports because I think it can be even better. I think it could get even bigger um in the coming season so i don't think being you know but my whole point is just, i don't think just going oh well we're, we're making 20 mil we should only spend 20 mil i think that's the wrong mentality i think you go hey we could we could make this even better we can make this even better. it doesn't mean we need to hire more people we need to pay more people we need bigger prize pools we need more tournaments it can just be where where is the value like where are we finding you know that that improvement for next season Oh, that improvement in in the right. Where are we going to get more eyes on the game? How are we going to get more eyes on the game? What are we going to do? And if that means spending a bit more money, then I think. Well, I'm not Epic Games, but I think that is a perfect. Uh, I think it's a perfect esport to really invest in and try and make it that crossover between regular sports and esports. Try and make it more mainstream. Is anyone it's with e me? Yeah. It's e for everyone. 
It's easy to understand. It has an infinite skill ceiling. It's a very unique esport from for those reasons. No other esport can tick all three of those boxes. Like there's some esports that are easy to understand, very hard to master, but not E for everyone. Some esports are, you know, not that easy to understand, very hard to master E for everyone. Else. But yeah, Rocket League is a perfect trifecta. Um you can show it to literally anybody, they, they'll get what's going on. Oh, the car, the car is trying to put the ball in the goal. Simple. Uh, but they, you try and get good at it? Yeah, good luck. Can Very I, hard game. Can I say something? <laughs> <laughs> you can. Okay, good. Uh, you're talking about if, if you were epic, right? If you were epic in the situation, you spent more money to grow your esports and stuff like that. Let's talk about, hmm. let's talk about, let's be, let's be a little bit more in our own shoes here. Let's be a little bit realistic. If we were to grow Chotcast, should we be spending, which we did, by the way, and we realized yeah, we, uh, we have we have done that. We spent more money than we had at a point in time. And then we're like, oh, we're like, oh, geez. Okay, this is a horrible idea. But if, you know, well, I'm going to say if we are chalkcast, what should we be doing in this situation to, not in this situation, but in, in, in our situation to grow our podcast? Should we be spending more or should we be spending what we have, CJ? Oh, are you saying should we be investing? Well, because we're already not, we're already spending the money that we make. Yeah, we are, we, saying, we, are a, we, we are a net zero company. We are a net we're zero, zero company. We're not hiring, but are you we're saying not, should we not anyway. only be a net zero company, but also be a, ben, a negative yes. zero company? Invest. Is that what you're saying? Yes, um, should we? Are you saying That's negative zero as in we lose money or make money? I don't think uh, negative so. zero is different from zero. I think it's just the same. <laughs> Can you have a uh, negative zero? <laughs> No, you can't. A, well, no, a you can't. negative it's company. Well, well, look, it just depends where it goes. I mean, it's the same thing with Epic Games. Like, they could really try and make it. Like, they have the money. They have the facilities to make Rocket League enormous. And I think the goal for Rocket League should be, as I said, mainstream crossover. We're talking, you know, we meme about the whole Olympics thing. It happened during COVID. It ended up being, like, online, and then they had the comma. But... But I'm talking like, you know, Rocket League could be in the actual Olympics, you know, when, when we finally, yeah. when we do get esports, you know, like that is, as I said, it's a perfect game. Let's forget about this whole, you know, <laughs> mobile sailing games and, and archery with DLC yeah. oh that, that they made it and this virtual Taekwondo or whatever that was. Like this could, Rocket League is the game. It, Rocket League is a game that people will be like, oh, that's actually kind of fun to watch and, and it kind of makes sense. I can see what's going on. Um, so with chalk, I mean, it's the same thing. Where are we putting money to, to grow? It depends. You know, we don't want to just be putting it in, in bad areas, areas where, you know, we're just, we're just, you know, bringing a team to land. They can't even, hmm. can't even use our shit. <laughs> so that, that didn't really work out. Um, but how much, so, so how, mu how much did Fortnite in their first, it was 100 million. Is that what chat's saying? 100 million. Their first million year for the first... of esports was a 100 million dollar prize pool. 100 million. And then, and then, then it went to year. 30 million, and now it's 4 million. Mil. So, wait, the Fortnite World Cup Finals 2019, 15 million. Fortnite World Cup Finals 2019, the duo tournament, also 15 million. So, it's 30 million on the, the finals, if I'm not mistaken. And then another 70 million throughout the calendar year. Is that correct, chat? One in chat, if this is true. Um, I mean, it seems like they tried CJ's idea. They were like, "Let's just throw a bunch of money at it." Um, and that was dumb. Fair, that was a horrible See, way of doing yeah, it. My, my, putting it straight in the well, prize pool is such a bad way of doing it. I was, but yeah, that's the point I was going to make. It's like everybody when we're watching that, we kind of knew that's not going to work. Like you, you can't just. I mean, obviously, people are going to watch, but that's not how you build a scene. That's not how you grow. That's not how any esport has grown. Just like bunch of money in a prize pool let's see if people are interested in it anymore like it's part of it you need the prize pool to be enough to incentivize players to play the game full-time incentivize orgs to sign players who play the game full-time and incentivize viewers to watch like it is part of it but it's not like when we all saw that we're like what is going on here i will um, say though so, yeah i think it was the worst investment because that that got mainstream media like there is a hundred million dollar you, you know for, like a e kids are playing e video games and they, kids they are playing games and they're like this the is insane. Talk this, shows. yeah like this kid won fifteen million or ten whatever the the first four do, do, do you remember that's when people learned about tax because Booga won like three million for winning yeah. and then all of the all these fans the were up in arms like the, the government's gonna take half of his money because they didn't know well, about also, tax he, until he, that he point was also and they like an about org. It. He's also on an org, and the org had a cut as well. I'm like, he's, yeah. he's not even going to make the 3 million. 
Yeah, they were like, I can't believe they're going to take E1, 3 million, fair and square. They're taking it away from us. Like, look at all these kids who just learned about tax. That's crazy. But anyway, like, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it is, you know, something that undeniably promoted Fortnite and would have had some return on the investment um, inevitably. But do you reckon they recouped the 100 mil? Do you reckon they got it back? Like, if it, even long term. Like, if, they, if the 100 mil theoretically got a fan of, of Fortnite, to then spend a certain amount of money in his lifetime, and that happened enough times, will they ever recoup the 100 mil? Ever. From that first I don't year. think so. I don't think they will. <laughs> if no. I was to guess. I think about how big that game got, though, the, the, the career. But wasn't it already big, though? It was already the biggest game at the at time, the, I believe. At the time, they were earning 200 million a month from the shop. Yeah, that's how they got the 100 mil. But that's mil, at the time. Did they, did they huge. add that amount of money? I think maybe. I think there's a good chance, actually. I think they did. I, I don't think, think it was the worst. The mil mil. Back? I think they were like, we are. We we need to ride this into the ground, um, <laughs> and we are going to go as. <laughs> I reckon they just thought they could turn it into the biggest esport. Like they were just like, if we just do this, everybody's going to watch Fortnite. It's going to be the biggest esport by far. Boom! Now we're the esport, and we're going to get all the money back. But uh, I mean, based on the trajectory of Fortnite, and now the like, like Riz is saying, the fact that they're cutting uh, or laying off people in all of the teams related to these sectors, it seems like they're investing elsewhere, which would indicate that they don't think it's worth investing in like 100 million prize pools anymore. <laughs> and, um, well, that's already obvious because they went from 100 to 30 to 4. So Yes, yes. So it seems like, okay, if that, you know, <laughs> really is a, a big if that's drop. A, that's a big drop. Imagine a 7% drop, drop really from 100 to 30. It's and a then, pretty big like, drop, um, bro. And then it's like another That'd 70 like from 30 to 4, is it not? What's uh, like, a, 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 what do we got, 6 million like total 80. prize pool for RLCS? That's like, hey, RLCS overall is worth like 100k or something. I like, mean, if uh, we just do like, what was the RLCS prize pool? 6 mil? So 6. If you went to like uh, 750,000, Divided by 100 equivalent. times 4, it would actually be 240,000 would be the same drop between like current and then two years from now if they made the same percentage decreases. But what is a annual what is price seventy percent drop from six mil? Oh, you just want that one? Yeah. So well, yeah, you just gotta go six divided by ten times three. One point eight. Oh my god. So if it went to one that would be like their the hundred to thirty would be the same as RCS going from six to one point eight. And then if you want to go all the way to four, then yeah, what was it? Two hundred and forty two forty, yeah. Dollars. Yeah. So that that is crazy. Mm-hmm. I want to get back. Yeah, so like, it's, it's, a, it's a big drop. I just still think Rocket League is in such a different space than these esports. As I said, I, I want to just get, I want to hone in on the mainstream thing because surely we can be that. You know, as CJ you said, as Tim's you said, not listening, buddy. <laughs> but listen, because like if <laughs> what if, if, is, like, what you're in is. front of a board of directors, like they're all sixty, right? And let's say it's <laughs> let's say it's the Olympics board. All right, they're all you know they're they're the Olympics oh, board. They're man. probably ninety. Like the guys that run the Olympics, and you're trying to you're trying to sell an esport. Let's mm-hmm. let's compare. Let's let's say League of Legends. I'd say that's probably bro. The like they, they they sold the archery game with like the the <laughs> mobile archery game to the Olympics. Exactly. I'm pretty sure you could sell like because anything to these guys. Like let's let's <laughs> try and explain League of Legends to you to your grandma. All right, 150 champs. Four abilities each, no, plus so this, an ultimate. This champ ten on the pitch. That. There's three lanes. You're versing each other. You've got minions. You've <laughs> got towers. There's a time limit. Buff spawn. No, the towers the are actually stronger spawn. in the first 14 There's minutes. a dragon as well, which is There's pretty cool. There's a nexus you're going to kill, but then also you could just lose through other ways as well. You could just... You know, 15 minutes until you can surrender if it's going bad. This is, I mean, it is insanity. Like a hundred, there's, how many champions are there? There's a, a hundred. Every time I go back to this game, they there's just, a new champion. They just released a new, a a new foot fetish champion. Up. Explain that one to your grandma. <laughs> Wait, they did what though? <laughs> what? Excuse me, what? what? There's, <laughs> there's, I'll, I'll explain it quick because I don't want to get into this, but there's a whole thing about like, <laughs> they, they basically made a champion and then they, they kind of like made the lore about their that champion's feet. And a lot of the oh the splash God. art is about their feet. <laughs> it's like a foot fetish champ. And the I'm Reddit afraid to search this. And the Reddit went crazy for it. The Reddit was like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah." Baby. Oh, but <laughs> you got you got to think the the whole point of that is for like the fan art, you know, the Rule Thirty Four type thing. Uh, what but is wrong regardless, with people, anyway, so, yeah, get get back to it. Back, back to my point. 
<coughs> there's eight with with all the champions. <coughs> There's 820 abilities. Let's not forget how how many items are in League of Legends. Well, <laughs> how many items? How many items do you have There's to learn? There's a lot of items, bro. A lot of items. There's over 200 items as well. There's 820. I feel like there's more than 200 items. I mean, it is, as I said, it is a very, it's a, it's, for me, I can see what's going on for the most part, but I see I'm like, what the yeah, hell is that? Yeah, it's a good game. Like I, I like the game. You see it's a team a fight toxic. and you're like, I like it though. What is happening? But I enjoy league. I play a lot of league. Um, well, yeah, I used play, to play, play a lot more. Play league, a fair bit. Have played a lot. But I play it's quite just, a bit. It just, it just, I don't think it can be that. You know, as you said, you can show your Mainstream. grandma yeah. Rocket League and be like, okay, couple of goals. Like it's pretty, pretty. Yeah. There's some shit going on. I don't really know who's on whose team, but I can see two goals and I see a big ball and I can see a scoreboard and I see a timer. This makes sense. I can, I can pick up who's in the lead. What's happening? League of Legends, who, you don't really know who's winning. There's gold advantage, there's kill advantage, there's, there's tower advantage. But, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to rag on League of Legends. I just, I, I, know, I did hone like in trying on to rag on League of Legends. I did that's hone like in on, exactly on them as doing. a comparison top tier esport. But I, I think that hopefully Epic can see, you know, with, well, I think they're sitting on a, on a, on a gold mine here. They're sitting on a diamond in the rough. But I still think Rocket League is nowhere near where it could be. Do you think that, that that's kind of Unreal Engine 5, though? Like, are we... Are we uh, no, I see of... your point. I don't think it needs... I, I think Unreal Un Engine 5 is a separate thing. I think it, you know, may be, like, a big boost to the game, but I don't think it's necessary. I think current Rocket League could easily be what you're describing as, like, the mainstream eSport. Um, but no, I, I don't think, uh, like you said, I don't think it's one eSport <laughs> versus another. Like, the, the money from, like, one eSport, is it doesn't come from, like you know, League of Legends. I suppose with this, now finally that Rocket League and Epic or Epic own multiple esports, it does in a way. They could choose to invest more in one esport compared to another. Um, but yeah, Rocket League is so small compared to all of these like big esports like uh, Fortnite and League, Dota. Just to give you guys an idea of what that looks like. The Dota 2 all-time prize money won roughly is 337 million. So a quarter of a billion. Uh, no, a third of a billion, sorry, uh, dollars. Fortnite, 169 million. Counter Strike Global Offensive, 160 million. League of Legends, 105 million. Rocket League, 35 million. So it's like way down there, much, much smaller. Mm. Esport. It's, there's less, less money's been invested in it over the years. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's been in a, it's like CJ said, it's been in a very consistent up, upward trajectory. Um, so. It you know it, it it's not similar. It's, it's not it's got taken the same path as Fortnite, which is by far the most popular game, had so much money put into the esport, and now they're investing less. You know we we're just hoping, yeah. uh, to be specific, we're hoping that that you know pattern of investment in in uh, Fortnite is not the planned pattern for Rocket League. Like CJ said, I think Rocket League has potential to be. So much bigger. Just had its most successful season ever. Just had its most successful mm. LAN event ever. Um, and yeah, could could easily, I think, if, if there were more people working on it and if there were more um, more money put into it, could, it could grow so much more. The, the, the viewer base, the potential is like nowhere near saturated. So The steady yeah, growth as well hoping. is a massive testament. I know we sort of got away from the whole Epic Labs, but that's a massive testament to some of the people yeah. that have been laid off with Chloe and Jake. And obviously the entire... Um, esports team, that's a testament to them, the fact that they they probably could have, you know, maybe gone they could have done a lot of things bad. Um, but the whole the whole steady growth thing is is a testament to them. They obviously wanted to, you know, they want longevity. We want this esports to be around mm. for, like it's like a regular sport. We want this thing to keep kicking on and uh, but we do need to improve as well. I know less also in the chat, I guess, you know, the player base is a massive indicator that we are tiny um, compared to some of these other these other games. Um, yeah. And also, uh, you know, there's someone brought a good point which sort of relates to what Les saying in chat just about um, how the game is sort of not doing too much uh, to keep people coming back. But with the Unreal Engine 5, um, Johnny, you touch on how the eSport doesn't really need it, but but the game does. You know what I mean? It feels like that's, yes. that's yeah. what's going to bring new people into the game. Also, yes. we had the free-to-play massive... Um, buff in twenty was it twenty twenty free to play was that three years ago now? Nineteen was it maybe. Twenty twenty was it? Wow. September twenty twenty, I think. That was kind oh, of the last okay. big push, wasn't it? Like that was kind of the last you know thing we've had that got um, a lot of new eyes to the game. Um, apart mm. from the esports, yeah. there's not really apart from hey, we've got 
um, the Porsche 911 Turbo jump in. Um, there's not much else. Hey, that, I don't mind that. that. I don't mind that. I got I to play in a tournament yeah, for that. That was pretty sweet. I got to relive really the golden days for that one. Um, so hey, yeah, is the solution, you know, with, with uh, uh, obviously it's a hot topic with salt mine happening next week. Uh, but is the solution just to slice the costs in in in, in a, into like a, a third, thirty three point uh, percent oh, by I turning RLCS mean. into one v one? Is that the solution here? Just no. keep no. everything no. the same. Why a layoff Not situation? A keep everything the he same. <laughs> he messaged Tim and said, "Timmy." <laughs> Jimmy, mate, sit down. I've got the solution for you. I know that things are kind of looking dicey right now at Epic Games, but we could cut costs even further because instead of flying three people to a land, we could fly one. And Tim's like, instead of paying this is, three, Tim's you like, pay this is one. genius. Minus 900. Thank you so much, Johnny boy. <laughs> yeah, so Johnny, you blame Johnny, everyone. Uh, no, um, don't blame me. I didn't do that. I didn't know. I promised. <laughs> no, once is I, I, I don't know. Is this is this where we completely change up the format? Who knows what's going to happen? No, is a long I, don't, I don't think so. I think I think but, both um, game modes should and could coexist, and that uh, yeah, that I I do think that's a growth mechanism, but I don't think it's a a way to save money. I think I I think I, the the solution, in my opinion, would be to uh, copy paste the RLCS circuit, downsize it significantly. And run it one v one on weekdays. That would be what I. That's what I would do if I had the means. Uh, but yeah, I don't. So we're just gonna do salt mine instead <clears throat> and uh, see what happens. Unfortunately, we don't have the means, which means we do need more Patreon supporters. If you guys do want access to extra bonus episodes every week of Chalkcast, we have twenty bonus episodes released. I believe. I think it is twenty. Twenty episodes released already. I think it's more so than that. If you become a new Patreon subscriber. We actually have 22. If you become a new Patreon descri- mm. subscriber, you get access to all those episodes and a new one every single week. Check it out. Patreon.com slash Chalkcast. Join the Discord and all that good stuff. I forgot where I was going with that, but be sure how to join late, Can I say our latest episode that we just uploaded this oh, week? Yeah. You can check out if you're on the Patreon. <laughs> I I had a solution that could could fix a lot of these problems with the RLCS. And, and, and I'll throw it out here. You can watch the full episode on Patreon, but I, I discussed... You know, the biggest issue with esports is ping. It's distance. Oh, it's trying to connect. It's trying to connect these regions together. So I yeah. went in depth <laughs> on imagine how much would it cost to run an underwater Ethernet cable connecting the entire world. And let me know. Let us, let us tell, yeah. like, you're going to have to watch the episode. Make sure you get, the, get on the Patreon. But we crunched the numbers. For we Shortcast did. LLC to have purchase it. enough Ethernet cables to run from Australia <laughs> to LA. That would fix OCE. CJ, and CJ did talk about Yeah, he looked at all the numbers for this. And we also left. We also realized that that potentially already exists. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, massive, mean, the massive network cable under the ocean. Work. But... <laughs> It doesn't so work we that may well, have though. Realized there that are that issues because CJ time. still has high but, ping, so we need a fix. But it was uh, fun discovering that and also trying to work out how much it would cost for us to do our own. Because we clearly think that the existing network uh, system under the Pacific Ocean... We were doing measurements Ocean and everything. Is, <laughs> guys, it's because if you think about it, you tell a flat earther, the earth is round, just go get in a plane, you'll be able to see it once you get up that high. It's kind of like we're all flat earthers because we've been told, actually, there's an Ethernet c- cable underneath the ocean. Have you ever been under the ocean and seen it? <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> I think we should verify that information before we make exactly. these ridiculous assumptions. And why don't we just go lay another one just in case the first one? If you also. Google, did you lay the you cable think, yourself? Exactly. If you Google like the cable, the network cable system under the ocean, there it's uh, it's going. Every, it looks ridiculous. I don't believe it for a second. The amount of pipes, <laughs> cables that are running to Hawaii, to the Philippines, connecting Asia, connecting uh, yeah. all the different cond, it is insane and i don't believe it until i see it i haven't seen a single yeah. one of these these pipes that have all these cables in them so we're gonna either. have to do our own yep mm. we're gonna go we're gonna go check it out but first we need your you guys support because we can't afford <laughs> we, can't we will afford. go scuba totally diving you know, straight into the bottom of the ocean just check out that for those that are out. listening yeah. uh, for those that are listening that are not watching it is <laughs> patreon.com forward slash chalked cast it's a simple easy link 
make sure you check uh, it out. As you said, we have 22 episodes, new episodes coming out every counting, week as well. Counting. And counting. And it, and we we cover the big topics like that. That's just a little uh, <laughs> that's a little insight. We're, you know, we're trying to solve the world issues, the global issues, you know, particularly in esports and gaming, but everything as well, everything in between. Check it out. Oh my god. Okay. Merch. I think we've gone on an extreme ramble here, but I do think we all got our points across besides the the big network cable. Are we I think we're all good here. I think we're all good on the the conversation. Obviously the yeah, entire situation um was re- I mean really unfortunate. And like I mentioned earlier, you know these people aren't just like employees of Epic Games. These are people that I would consider my friends and it's Yes. Truly unfortunate, yeah. and I, I, I do uh, wish the best for them, and I hope, uh, I mean, honestly, hey, guys, I said it earlier, I didn't say it on the podcast, but I do wish Shotcast could hire them, but unfortunately, I don't think we make enough money. <laughs> I, I also don't think they'd want to work for us. Like, they're a That is also over, a good point. I think they have too much respect for themselves, which is fair. Yeah. yeah. Way yeah. too much yeah. qualifications. <laughs> Whereas skills, we have talent, we have zero uh, respect for ourselves, which is which is really good. But uh, hopefully, yeah. um, I know John is right in there. Hopefully, we did, um, I guess, paint a better picture about what these guys did for the scene as well. Because I know we, I saw a lot of comments on Reddit, Twitter, and stuff that are kind of like, oh, you know, that's terrible. But like, what what actually? Like, I know these people did stuff, but what did they actually do? And trust me, from from our, um, our three perspective, who have done a lot um, behind the scenes, these guys were massive for the esport which is why we needed to talk about it which is why we postponed um our other episode yeah. uh, for next week because we really want to i guess you know pay them their due diligence as well we don't want to i guess gloss over it and pretend like it's not happening because it is a big thing for the esport um in general and uh we well i don't want to say we're we're scared but it was certainly a shock um and we, we want to yeah. let you guys know that we are also um certainly not I guess taking this one lightly. This is this is pretty big. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it's very serious. But we don't want them to be unsung heroes. We want them to be sung heroes. We want people to know yeah. that they had a big impact on the product that you guys have watched and enjoyed for you know many years in, in some cases. Um, and yeah, hopefully, like uh, like you guys have been saying, like we've been saying the entire episode. Hopefully, they land. I know they're gonna land on their feet. They're very talented people. Like honestly, we're gonna miss them uh, probably like a lot more. Then they're gonna miss a job because they're gonna they're gonna land on their feet. They're gonna get in straight into a new job and inevitably kill it because they're all very very talented people. They'll be sorely missed. Um, but yeah, like uh, Chloe said in her uh, Reddit comment, I think it was she's not gonna be a stranger. So hopefully we'll see. Hopefully we'll see them around. Hopefully we'll be able to work with them again in the future. And yeah, hopefully more news about what's happening with this merger and uh, the next. The next steps for RLCS, what's what's happening next? Because we, we we're supposed to hear more about next season. Uh, when did they say? That was in a different announcement. You'll, we didn't talk about like, it today. you'll hear from us in 2024. So did they like, say 2024? Lines. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Like, are, you're they, talking about the RLE Sports like vague announcement, right? Yeah, the vague announcement. Did they say? Chat. When I think did they, they say said that we'll be back in 2024. First off, the RLCS morning. is set to return in 2024. Okay. I imagine if it's returning 2024 uh, officially, then there will be announcements before, like some point Probably, before yeah. 2024. So yeah, hopefully that's soon. Hopefully there's some more, you know, not just one big announcement. You know, I'm personally hoping for lots of announcements um, about the plan. Do you know <laughs> teasers, um, proper you know roadmap type of thing. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, that's where we're at right now. And if there's more, we'll let you guys know. We will let you know. Um, that is going to wrap up Chodcast. Oh, geez, what is this? 58? Is that what I said at the beginning? I can't even remember. 58, it is. Chodcast yeah. number 58. If you guys miss any part of it, check it out on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. We appreciate you guys all for listening. Join the Discord if you haven't already. And also, yes, we did accidentally plan an episode four days in advance. So next Monday, we do have an episode ready with two guests. We're bringing back the 5KM. Is that unbelievable That's or right. not? Mm -hmm. absolutely unreal but thank you so much for listening we appreciate you guys and we hope you enjoyed we'll see you guys all in the next one Bye bye bye